In 2023, the IMF predicted that the Islamic Republic of Iran would emerge as a major power in Western Asia. Then, in January 2024, the country took the world by surprise when it officially became a member of BRICS. This wasn't unexpected, considering that economically, Iran is significantly larger than South Africa, another BRICS member. BRICS has generally maintained a neutral stance in the Gaza conflict, but Iran's entry promises to add an intriguing element. This is especially noteworthy considering Iran's consistent and vocal criticism of Israel, including a history of hostility towards the nation and its allies. Iran's addition to the economic bloc, which includes Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, has stirred unease. This isn't just in Western nations, but also within the bloc itself. Such a shift could intensify the existing tensions between BRICS and Western geopolitical blocs. Let's talk about Israel. As a key Western ally and a major power in Western Asia, Israel's concern is palpable. Despite the neutrality maintained by Russia, China, and South Africa in Middle Eastern conflicts, their relations with Iran have never been hostile. This opens up possibilities for Iran to use these ties to its advantage, particularly in its stance against Israel. Over in the United States, there's close monitoring of these developments. Iran joining BRICS is more than just a new alliance. It's a statement against U.S. unilateralism and a move toward reducing the global dominance of the U.S. dollar. The entry of Iran into BRICS reshapes the bloc's global standing. Once seen as a group with lesser economic impact, BRICS is now shaping up to be a formidable opponent to NATO and its allies. Iran's influence extends far beyond its refusal to align with the U.S., a dominant force in Western Asia and a central adversary in the Middle East, Iran's inclusion in BRICS is a strategic play by Russia and China. They recognize Iran's pivotal role in forming a united front against U.S. influence. This development has garnered global attention, a level of interest that might have been less pronounced with the inclusion of Southeast Asian countries. So what makes Iran such a power player? A large part of it boils down to its military strength, which commands a significant presence in Western Asia. Let's dive into the specifics of Iran's military capabilities. As per the Global Military Strength Index, Iran holds the 17th position, outpacing Saudi Arabia, which ranks 22nd. Yet, when we examine the financial aspect, it's intriguing to note that Saudi Arabia actually outspends Iran. Based on available data, Iran's military expenditure amounts to $5.5 billion, while Saudi Arabia splurges up to $46 billion. From a fiscal standpoint, Iran could potentially allocate a larger budget. The current budget only constitutes 1.5% of Iran's total GDP, which tallies up to $359.7 billion. However, additional budget allocation seems unnecessary for Iran as it does not prioritize procuring main weapon system equipment, which is notorious for imposing hefty costs. Iran's procurement is deemed weak for two reasons. Firstly, it's susceptible to corruption. Secondly, Iran possesses its own facilities for manufacturing and developing weaponry, which is proven to be effective and on par with international standards. The existing data shows Iran has 4,081 tanks, 69,685 armored vehicles, 2,630 self-propelled artillery, and 1,085 rocket projectors. The Karar tank, a significant player in Iran's arsenal, exemplifies Iran's domestically produced military hardware. This tank, manned by a three-person crew, is globally acknowledged for its intricate weapon system. 
It's armed with a 125mm2A46 smoothbore cannon as its primary weapon boasting a firing range of up to 3.1 miles. This main armament is also capable of firing various types of ammunition, integrated with a satellite imaging system for enhanced precision. With this setup, Karar's primary weapon is recognized as one of the most competent laser-guided anti-tank missile launchers. Apart from its main weapon, there are two secondary weapons, a 7.62mm coaxial machine gun for close combat and a 12.7mm caliber machine gun equipped with an advanced remote control system. This system enables the Iranian military to operate this weapon from the headquarters as an auxiliary attack, leaving the crew to focus on their primary tasks. With its satellite integration and remote operation capabilities, it's no surprise the Karar is deemed sophisticated. In addition to the Karar tank, Iran's Zolfagar ballistic missile stands out for its lethal capabilities. This missile is one of Iran's deadliest weapons and has been acknowledged by Russia for its role in the Ukraine conflict. With a range of up to 435 miles and a warhead weighing 1,102 pounds, the Zolfagar is capable of annihilating strategic buildings. If Iran's technological prowess garners recognition from Russia, it's understandable why Saudi Arabia has grounds for concern. The Iranian armed forces boast two distinct military forces. First, there's the Revolutionary Guard, also widely known as the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Secondly, there's the Army of the Islamic Republic of Iran, colloquially known as Artesh, which serves as the national army. Artesh is composed of four branches, the Army, Navy, Air Force, and the newly formed Air Defense Force, each playing a pivotal role in the nation's defense. The National Army of Iran, known as the Islamic Republic of Iran Army Ground Forces, and in the Persian language referred to as Nezaja, has a rich history that dates back to the establishment of the Persian Empire. It has evolved into a modern army since 1923, adapting and growing through various geopolitical and military landscapes. Nazaja has been involved in numerous crucial operations over the years. From Operation Fath ul Mobin in 1981, where Iranian forces launched a massive counterattack into Iraqi territory in retaliation for previous Iraqi aggressions, to a year earlier where Iranian forces triumphed in desert battles, marking an unforgettable defeat for the United States due to a failed hostage rescue operation. Fast forward to Operation Zulfikar e Vilayat in 2020, which was conducted in response to escalating tensions in the Persian Gulf. Iran described it as a strategic military exercise involving various branches of the armed forces, showcasing their military prowess and strategic capabilities. Currently, Nizaja comprises 350,000 personnel out of a total military personnel of 1,015,000 individuals. They are funded from an overall military budget that reaches a substantial $5.5 billion, ensuring they are equipped and prepared for various military endeavors. Iran operates a diverse fleet each piece crucial in maintaining and asserting their military strength. Let's take a closer look at their armament strength. According to the Global Firepower website, Iran's military strength ranks 17th globally. The Iranian army possesses assets of 69,685 vehicles, including 4,071 tanks, 580 self-propelled artillery, 2,050 towed artillery, and 1,085 rocket projectors, each playing a vital role in their ground operations. For standard equipment, they utilize pistols such as the PC-9 Zoaf, FN High Power, and Colt M, 1,911A1. Their light machine guns include the Tonder MPT-9 and MPT-9S, which are variants of the German-made Heckler and Amp, Coke MP5, the Spanish-made Star Model Z84, and the Israeli-made Uzi. For their shotguns, they employ the Hudson Escort MPATS, a variant of a break-action shotgun designed for various applications, including security, law enforcement duties, sport shooting, and hunting, manufactured in Turkey. 
Then when it comes to their battle rifles, they utilize the German-made Heckler and Ampi Coke G3A6, along with the Iranian-made Masaf II, Zulfikar Z1, and Azarch. Their assault rifles include the KLS, KLF, KLT, which are replicas of the AK Platform Type 56 and AKM. Additionally, there are the KL-133, Sayad 5.56, Fajr 224, and seven other types of assault rifles. For sniper rifles, they are equipped with the Nakjir, Siyavash, Tahir, Stair HS.50, Shahir, and Arash. And for machine guns, they have the RPK Rheinmetall MGA3 PKM W85 MGD 12.7 CS Slash LM2A and Moharam. Now shifting our focus to their grenades, the Iranian army employs the Iranian-made Nasser grenade, the Kaveh 30 and GP25 from Russia, and the M79 from the United States. Next, the Iranian army's anti-tank weapons utilize a variety of anti-tank weapons to counter enemy armored vehicles and tank targets. Starting with the RPG-7, a widely used portable rocket launcher in anti-tank warfare, this relatively lightweight, user-friendly weapon can effectively demolish armored vehicles. Then, there's the Russian-made RPG-29 anti-tank rocket launcher capable of penetrating thicker outer steel layers than the RPG-7. This weapon has higher penetration capabilities and poses a serious threat to modern armored vehicles. Furthermore, there's the Type 69 RPG anti-tank rocket launcher developed by China. This weapon is also used by the Iranian army and has the capability to penetrate the steel layers of enemy vehicles. Additionally, the SPG-9 recoilless gun can be used for anti-tank warfare. This weapon utilizes 73 mm caliber ammunition and has sufficient penetration capabilities to destroy tank targets and the American-made M40 anti-tank rifle. Although not a rocket launcher like the RPG variants, this rifle uses ammunition with sufficient penetration capabilities to combat armored vehicles. Now let's explore their collection of anti-tank missiles, starting from the Tufan with its variants up to seven types. Then there are Segi-12, Quaim, Delavi, Rod, 9K111 Faggot, 9M113 Conkers, Tausan 1, 9K115 2, Midas M. The main battle tanks of Nizaja include the Karar, a domestically developed Iranian main battle tank that stands as a new generation tank, boasting capabilities comparable to other modern main battle tanks. Then there's the T-72S, a version of the Soviet T-72 main battle tank, which has been modified and utilized by the Iranian army. Additionally, there's the T-72 Raksh, another modified version of the T-72 used by Iran. Furthermore, the Zulfikar MBT-1, 2, 3 family of Iranian-made main battle tanks have undergone several developmental iterations. Also in their arsenal is the T-72 Z Safir 74, a modification of the Soviet T-72 main battle tank, the British-made Chieftain tank and its variant named Moborez, and lastly the M60A1 Samsom, a modified version of the M60A1 Patton tank, are also part of their formidable lineup. Next we have light tanks such as the Tosin, often considered a light tank with commendable mobility. It can be utilized for various roles, including reconnaissance and light infantry support, and the British-made FV-101 Scorpion. Although more accurately described as a combat vehicle rather than a tank, the Scorpion is a versatile vehicle with reconnaissance and light attack capabilities. Both vehicles demonstrate a crucial role in supporting lighter, high-mobility defense needs and military operations across diverse terrains. Now let's transition to looking at Armored Personnel Carriers, or APCs, which are armored combat vehicles designed to transport infantry troops on the battlefield. The Iranian army possesses the Iranian-made Bora, whose design and technology were adopted from the American M113 Armored Combat Vehicle. Then there's the OT-62 Topaz, 
made in Poland and Czechoslovakia, first developed in the 1960s. Lastly, there's the American-made M113A1-M577. The M577 is a variant of the M113 designed as a command and control vehicle. The M113 is one of the most produced amphibious armored combat vehicles in the world and has been adopted by numerous countries globally. Not to be left out is their collection of wheeled armored personnel carriers, which includes the Raksh and Haidar. For amphibious vehicles, they have the Macron IFV, and for infantry fighting vehicles, they have the BMP-2. Their AFVs include the M113-12 CNR Lynx. The Iranian Army, Iron, also operates anti-tank missile carriers such as Piruz, E-9 Cascavel, E-11 Urutu, MRAP Tufan, and Ra'ad. These vehicles serve to transport, launch, and support anti-tank missile operations to destroy or damage enemy armored vehicles such as tanks. Moreover, the Iranian army is equipped with various assault helicopters like the Hessa Shahid, 285, IIO Tufan, and Panha 2091. They also utilize military transport utility helicopters such as the Hesa Shahed 274, Hesa Shahed 278, Mil Mi 17, Augusta Bell 206, Bell UH 1 and Twin Huey, and Boeing CH 47 Chinook. Additionally, they have transport aircraft like the French made Dassault Falcon 20, Dutch made Fokker F 27, Friendship and American-made Aero Commander and Cessna 185. Shifting our focus to their extensive artillery collection, they have a wide range from the 37mm Marsh Mortar HM-12 up to HM-16 Razum Mortar to Waffa Mortar. They also have multiple rocket launcher systems like Fajr-1 through Fajr-5, Shaheen-1 and 2, BM-21 Grad and BM-27 Uragan. Their self-propelled artillery includes Rod 1, 2S1 Gvozdika, Rod 2, M109A1, M1978, 1, M1 M107, and M110. And their towed artillery includes M101A1, 2A18M, 122MMD-74 Type 60 field gun, 122MM HM-40, Type 54, and nine other types. For anti-ship missiles, they utilize Kalij FARS, Chai-2 Silkworm, Nassar-1, Noor, and six other types. And for ballistic missiles, they have Tondar-69, Ogab, Nazayat, Zelzal, and Fateh-110. Before we conclude, I'd also like to showcase various collections of short, medium, long-range, and portable air defense systems owned by the newly formed Iranian Air Defense Force. This unit is distinct from the Iranian Air Force. For their air defense artillery systems, they have ZU-23-2, Samovat, Sa'ir, Mesba-1, ZSU-23-4 Shilka, and ZSU-57-2. Then, for their short-range air defense missile systems, they possess Rapier, Hertz-9, Tor missile system, and Yazara-3. For medium-range air defense missile systems, they are equipped with MIM-23 Hawk, 2 K-12 Cub, Mursad, Cayman 2, Rod 1, 2, and AMP, Kordad 3. And for long-range air defense missile systems, they have Sayad 2, Kordad 15, air defense system, S-200 Fajr-8 and S-200 Gara, S-300 missile system, S-300 PMU-2 system, and Bavar-373 system. Lastly, they also have portable air defense systems like Misak 2, Misak 3, and Kim. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, or IRGC, was established in 1979, a few months after the Islamic Revolution in Iran successfully overthrew the government of Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi. The primary goal behind the formation of the IRGC was to safeguard the ideology of the Islamic Revolution and the new regime led by Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini. This force was intended to supplant Iran's conventional military perceived as loyal to the old regime. Initially, the IRGC was tasked with protecting the revolution from counter-revolutionary elements. 
they subsequently engaged in guerrilla warfare against foreign and pro-Shah forces during the Iran-Iraq War from 1980 to 1988. They later got involved in the ongoing Syrian civil war that began in 2011. Over the years, the IRGC underwent modernization and expanded its role. They honed their military capabilities and embraced modern technology. Beyond military duties, the IRGC has also been involved in various economic sectors, ranging from oil and gas projects to construction and telecommunications, amounting to billions of dollars. This includes involvement in defense business and industries. Their economic might is not their only strength. They also wield significant political power, with many members of President Ebrahim Raisi's cabinet being former IRGC officers. The organizational structure of the IRGC is intricate. The supreme leader of Iran, currently Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, is the highest-ranking commander of the IRGC. The core comprises several divisions, including the IRGC Ground Forces, the IRGC Aerospace Force, the IRGC Navy, the Elite Quds Force, and the Basij Militia. The Quds Force is a specialized unit responsible for conducting covert and foreign operations in the interest of Iran. This force is notably involved in various wars, such as the Soviet-Afghan War, the 1982 Lebanon War, the Bosnia War from 1992 to 1995, the South Lebanon Conflict between 1985 and 2000, the Battle of Herat in 2001, the Balochistan Conflict, the 2014 Northern Iraq Offensive, the iran PJAK Conflict starting from 2004, and the military intervention against ISIS. The Quds Force is a specialized unit responsible for conducting covert and foreign operations on behalf of Iran. This force is renowned for its involvement in several wars, including the Soviet-Afghan War, the 1982 Lebanon War, the 1992-1995 Bosnia War, the South Lebanon Conflict from 1985-2000, to 2000, the 2001 Battle of Herat, the Balochistan Conflict, the 2014 Northern Iraq Offensive, the ongoing iran piak conflict since 2004, and military intervention against ISIS. The primary role of the Quds Force is to support Iran's allies worldwide and to advance and protect Iran's ideological agenda on the international stage. Their operations span covert activities, military aid, training, and logistics for groups that align with Iranian interests, mainly in the Middle East, including countries like Lebanon, Iraq, and Yemen. Significantly, they played a pivotal role in establishing Hezbollah in Lebanon in 1982. Furthermore, they oversee the Basij Division, which mobilizes civilian volunteers or a voluntary paramilitary force loyal to the religious establishment. This force is often called upon to suppress anti-government protests. During the 1980s war, this Basij Division launched human wave attacks against Iraqi forces. While officially recorded at 60,000 personnel, many analysts believe the number of active Basij volunteers might exceed 1 million. Currently, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps IRGC, holds a central role in Iran's foreign policy and security affairs. They support Iran's allied groups in the Middle East, particularly in Syria, Lebanon, and Iraq. Additionally, they are instrumental in missile technology development and are a potent force in Iran's domestic politics. As of 2022, data suggests the IRGC trains at least 210,000 active military personnel annually, with an additional paramilitary force of 60,000. For their defense budget, the last known figure from 2020 was 6.96 billion US dollars, considerably higher than the military budget of the Islamic Republic of Iran Army, which was only 5.5 billion US dollars. As for the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps' ground forces, they have 150,000 personnel. However, the weapons they use are combined with those used by the National Army of Iran, with a total asset of 69,685 vehicles. This includes 4,071 tanks, 580 self-propelled artillery, 2,050 towed artillery, and 1,085 rocket artillery units.
From 1925 to the Iranian Revolution in 1979, the primary suppliers of their weaponry included countries like the United States, the United Kingdom, France, West Germany, Italy, Israel, and the Soviet Union. Shifting our focus to the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps' Navy, it's estimated to have over 20,000 naval personnel. Their primary warship is the domestically built Shahid Soleimani-class missile corvette, a relatively new addition that first became operational on September 5, 2022. For fast attack vessels, they utilize an array of ships sourced from China, including the Shahid Madavi, Shahid Kord, Shahid Shafiye, Shahid Tavasoli, Shahid Hojatzadeh, Shahid Dara, Shahid Absalan, Shahid Raisi, Shahid Golzam, and Shahid Sorabi classes. Also, they have an Iranian-made vessel named Shahid Ruhi, which is also a recent addition. They also operate amphibious ships designed for naval operations and troop landings along coastlines. These ships include the Hijaz and Karbala, made in the Netherlands, and the Farsi, Sardasht, and Sab Sahel, manufactured in South Korea. In terms of transport ships, they employ the Nasser 111, Nasser 112, Nasser 113, and Shahid Siavashi. Interestingly, Iran also possesses a category of special ships known as the High Aspect Ratio Twin Hull Vessel, like the Shahid Nazari. This kind of ship has two long and narrow hulls, creating a high aspect ratio between the ship's length and width. Because of its high aspect ratio, the vessel has two relatively slim hulls with a large length-to-width ratio. This high aspect ratio allows the ship to sail stably in rough waters such as open seas. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps' Navy also has sea-based ships like the Shahid Rudaki and Shahid Madavi. Additionally, they are equipped with 21 patrol boats. Some of these are the Azaraksh made in China, Peikap Wurst or Zuljana made in North Korea, Tarig from Sweden, Ashura made in Iran, Ashura 33 from Italy, Cougar made in the UK, among several others. Now let's delve into their air force. The air fleet of the IRGC boasts a personnel strength of 15,000 members. Their combat aircraft fleet includes Russian-made Sukhoi Su-22 and Sukhoi Su-25 jets. For transportation purposes, they utilize the Soviet-made Ilyushin Il-76TD, Ukraine's Antonov N-74 TK-200, China's Harbin Y-12-2, and the French-made Dassault Falcon 20F. When it comes to helicopters, their arsenal consists of the Tufan-2, Hesse Shahed-285, Hesse Shahed-278, and Hesse Shahid-274, all manufactured in Iran, in addition to the Russian-made Milmi-17. In the realm of unmanned aerial vehicles UAVs, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps has an impressive lineup of domestically developed drones, including the Ababil Mohajer I-2-3-6, Karar, Shahed-129, Yasser, and Sege. Furthermore, they are equipped with a wide range of missiles, especially ballistic missiles. Experts consider them to be the largest force in the Middle East, directly overseeing Iran's ballistic missile program. The Missile Corps takes great pride in possessing the Fajr 3 Merv, Shahab 3, Ghadr 110, Ashura, Sejil, Simorg, Emad, Koramshar, Hoviza, Dezful, Rod 500, Haj Qasem, and the most recent addition, the hypersonic ballistic missile named Fada. Not stopping there, since 2020, the IRGC's Aerospace Force, which also houses the Space Command, has made significant advancements by launching their very own space program. They successfully sent their first military satellite, NOR, into orbit. And on September 27, 2023, they followed this up by launching another military satellite, NOR-3, which now orbits 280 miles above the Earth's surface. This development has raised concerns among many countries, notably the United States and Israel. On this matter, the United States and the European Union have long labeled Iran as a terrorist state. In 2020, the United States carried out a drone strike in Iraq that resulted in the death of its top commander, Major General Qasem Soleimani. His death raised alarms about potential large-scale conflict, 
especially after a senior commander commented that killing all American leaders wouldn't suffice as retaliation for Soleimani's assassination. Let's dive into Iran's air-based weaponry. Based on the numbers, Iran commands an impressive fleet in this department, consisting of 760 fighter jets, 196 support fighter aircraft, and 138 helicopters. The Iranian National Air Force, officially known as the Islamic Republic of Iran Air Force, or IRIAF, has been operational since 1925. Initially called the Imperial Iranian Air Force, it was renamed after the 1979 Iranian Revolution. Throughout its history, the Iranian Air Force has been involved in numerous pivotal operations, most notably during Operation Sultan 10. This mission aimed to repel Iraqi forces occupying border regions of Iran. During this operation, the Iranian Air Force played a crucial role in launching air raids against Iraqi military positions, infrastructure, and logistic facilities. This operation commenced on October 29, 1980, marking the onset of the Iran-Iraq War. It involved six American-made F-4E Phantom II aircraft and 33 IRIF units attacking the al Huria Air Base near Mosul in Iraq. Currently, the IRIF boasts 45,000 personnel out of a total military force of 1,015,000 members. Their funding stems from a total military budget of 5.5 billion US dollars. They operate an impressively diverse fleet of aircraft. Let's break down their air assets, one by one. According to Global Firepower's website, the IRIF possesses a total of 541 aircraft units. This includes 196 fighter jets, 31 attack planes, 126 helicopters, 86 transport aircraft, 94 trainers, 9 special mission units, 12 attack helicopters, and a tanker fleet comprising seven units. Iran's Air Force boasts an array of missiles and bombs, which form a crucial component of their defense and offensive capabilities. Notable among these is the GAST, a precision rocket-powered smart bomb developed to suit the Iranian Air Force's needs. It has a reach of approximately 62 miles and can carry an explosive payload of up to 1,984 pounds. Then there's the Zubin, an air-to-ground missile developed during the Iran-Iraq War. It's a rocket-powered version of the American M117 bomb equipped with television guidance. The ATGM Sadid-1, capable of being launched from the Shahed-129 drone, is another addition to their arsenal. The Fateh series consists of tactical ballistic missiles, which includes the Fateh-110 and Fateh-313. The Fateh-110 boasts a significant range and the capability to carry payloads between approximately 1,102 to 1,322 pounds. The Qayyum series, also a family of tactical ballistic missiles, is considered one of the most modern and advanced missiles in Iran's possession. Another noteworthy missile is the Satar, introduced as Iran's first laser-guided missile back in 2010. And lastly, the Ya'ali cruise missile, launched from the air, had its inaugural flight on May 11, 2014. As for air superiority fighter aircraft, designed and optimized for dominating airspace over the battlefield, they possess the Russian-made Mikoyan MiG-29, and are in the process of acquiring the Sukhoi Su-35, along with the American-made Grumman F-14 Tomcat. These fighter jets are crafted to dominate and win aerial combats against enemy aircraft, annihilate aerial targets like fighter jets, bombers, air-to-air -air missiles, 
and also to safeguard their own troops and infrastructure. In the category of multi-role fighter aircraft, which are designed to perform various missions and tasks on the battlefield, Iran boasts an assortment of jets. They have the domestically produced Hisa Saike and Hisa Kausar, the Russian-made Su-22, the Chinese-made Chengdu J-7, the French-made Mirage F-1, and the American-made McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II, and Northrop F-5 Tiger II. These aircraft offer the versatility to undertake multiple roles, such as air-to-ground strikes, surface-to-air defense, air-to-sea attacks, reconnaissance, air defense, and air-to-air -air combat. Shifting focus to their ground attack aircraft, Iran primarily employs the Hisa Azaraksh and the Russian Sukhoi Su-24. In the realm of general purpose transport and utility aircraft, they operate 10 different types. This list includes the Ukrainian Antonov An-74, the Russian Ilyushin Il-76, the French Dassault Falcon 20 and Dassault Falcon 50, the Dutch Fokker F-27 Friendship, the Swiss Pilatus PC-6 Porter, and the American Boeing 707, Boeing 747, Lockheed C-130, Hercules, and Lockheed Jetstar. These aircraft serve a myriad of purposes, ranging from civil and military operations to humanitarian aid missions. Of special note is Iran's latest and most reliable multi-role transport aircraft, the Hisa Simurg, which was unveiled on May 19, 2022. This aircraft, powered by the Russian Klimov TV-317 turboprop, has been specifically designed to be adaptable to Iran's climatic conditions. Adapted from the Ukrainian Antonov An-140, its standout features include agility, a lightweight design, an impressive cargo capacity of up to 13,228 pounds, and a flight range of approximately 559 miles. Now, let's shift our attention to the types of helicopters in their arsenal. For training purposes, the Irie AF employs the Italian-made Augusta Bell 206. For utility roles, they operate the Italian-made Augusta Bell 212. For heavy transport and logistics, they have the American-made Boeing CH-47 Chinook. And for multi-purpose operations, they rely on the Russian-made Mil Mi-17, Leaving behind the IREF's aircraft collection, let's venture into their drone fleet. It's evident that Iran's military foresight is vast, as they've been developing this technology since the 1980s. This advancement has positioned them as a formidable presence, causing apprehension in countries like Israel and among Ukrainian forces. While some nations might scoff at Iran, suggesting that their technological advancements stem from mimicking other countries, it's undeniable that their drone capabilities are extensive. To put this into perspective, they currently operate 32 different types of drones or unmanned aerial vehicles. Key among these is the Shahed series, developed domestically in Iran. This series includes variants like the Shahid 129, a versatile UAV with air-to-ground strike capabilities. Other noteworthy models are the Shahid-191 and Shahid-136, also known as kamikaze drones or loitering munitions, due to their unique capability to hover around a target area and detonate on command. Then, there's the renowned Ababil series, which has seen action in various regional conflicts. These UAVs have diverse mission capabilities, including surveillance and monitoring. The Karar is another standout, armed with air-to-ground strike capabilities, and can carry both bombs and air-to-ground missiles. 
The Mohajer series, consisting of various variants, has also been actively used by Iran in military operations. The Yasir, a tactical reconnaissance UAV, stands out for its capability to capture aerial imagery and provide battlefield intelligence. Another intriguing addition is the RQ-170 Sentinel copycat. Although not an original Iranian production, they have claimed to have captured and reverse-engineered this American spy drone after it fell into Iranian territory. They subsequently developed a local version referred to as the copycat, based on the captured UAV's data. The most recent and advanced is the Arash drone, including the Arash 2 variant, known for its long-range anti-radar capabilities. This suicide drone, which became operational in 2020, is rumored to have the capacity to reach as far as Israel. Looking ahead, Iran plans to bolster their Air Force fleet with more advanced aircraft. Some of these anticipated additions include the Russian-made fighter jets Sukhoi Su-30, Su-34 fullback, and Sukhoi Su-57, as well as the Chinese-made Chengdu J-10 and Shenyang FC-31. The IREF is also in the process of developing the stealth fighter IAIO Kaher 313. They aim to transform this into their latest UAV, enabling unmanned flight. Quite impressive, isn't it? As for weapons development, Iran stands as a pioneer, particularly in the drone sector. Should proxy warfare fall short of its intended goals, a strategy Iran might consider is launching a direct assault. Since Iran and Israel don't share a border, an aerial strike becomes a viable option. Iran could orchestrate such a strike using kamikaze drones. Within their arsenal, Iran boasts the domestically produced Shaded 136. This ammunition is crafted to target ground-based objectives from a distance and can be fired in significant quantities. The Shaded 136 can achieve speeds greater than 115 miles per hour. Its range is estimated to vary from around 602 miles to roughly 1,553 miles, with a payload ranging between 66 pounds to 110 pounds. Considering that the distance between Iran and Israel is approximately 1,110 miles, theoretically, the Shaded 136 could reach Israel in roughly five hours. But does this Iranian drone have experience in striking critical military assets? The answer is affirmative. The Shaded 136 has been used in the Yemeni Civil War and the Russian conflict in Ukraine. The United States military also suggests that groups aligned with Iran utilize the Shaded 136 when targeting its bases in Syria. Furthermore, the Shaded 136 has been deployed by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. Besides the Shaded 136, Iran could also deploy another kamikaze drone, the Arash-2, which has an attack range of about 1,242 miles. Another option would be Iran's newly launched combat drone in 2023, the Mohajer-10. This sophisticated drone boasts an operational range of approximately 1,242 miles and can remain airborne for 24 hours, flying at speeds of 130 miles per hour at an altitude of about 23,000 feet. The payload of the Mohajer 10 significantly outweighs that of the Shaded 136, coming in at around 661 pounds, double that of the Mohajer 6 drone. Such a heavy payload can decimate large ships or strategic targets with tremendous force. Though, by sheer calculations, these drones could fly from Iran to Israel. In reality, it's challenging for Iranian drones to directly strike Israeli territory. The reason? The United States maintains military bases equipped with robust aerial defense systems, especially in countries like Iraq and Syria. Here, drones would need to navigate territories controlled by the U.S. en route to Israel. In other words, before reaching Israeli skies, Iranian missiles would first have to penetrate the American aerial defense mechanisms. Thus, stealth fighter jets offer an alternative to drones for piercing American defenses. 
While much of Iran's air fleet consists of older and outdated equipment, they possess a domestically manufactured fighter jet named Kahir 313. This jet is purportedly equipped with fifth-generation stealth technology, making it challenging to be detected by aerial defense systems. Iran has claimed that its Kahir 313 jet can reach top speeds of up to 932 miles per hour, has a range of 1,242 miles, and can fly at altitudes up to 49,213 feet. Moreover, this aircraft can be armed with a variety of Iranian-made air-to-air missiles and precision-guided bombs. However, a potential threat to the Kahir 313 comes from early warning aircraft equipped with AWACS radar systems. Such aircraft aid fighter jets in long-range target tracking and confirmation. Subsequently, BVR missiles using their onboard radars can track and potentially overcome even stealth-class aircraft. Israel has developed the ELW-2090 Early Warning and Air Control Radar System to counter stealth fighter jets that might penetrate its airspace. Assuming that in a direct confrontation, Iran would face significant challenges against the air defense systems of Israel and its ally, the United States, the next logical step for Iran might be missile strikes. Iran has successfully developed missiles capable of potentially delivering nuclear warheads anywhere in the Middle East and even striking parts of Europe. Iran has also honed cruise and ballistic missiles for conventional warfare. Regarding Iran's ballistic missile arsenal, it primarily consists of short to medium range missiles, though some long range missiles are believed to be under development. Iran boasts of its Khoramshar 4, an upgraded version of the Iranian Khoramshar ballistic missile. This missile was tested in May 2023, achieving a range of 1,242 miles and can carry a warhead weighing 3,307 pounds. With such a range, the Khoramshar 4 can easily target military bases of both Israel and the U.S. in the Middle East. In its armory, Iran also has the hypersonic Fatah missile, claimed to be capable of penetrating Israeli defense systems. Theoretically, the Fatah can strike targets in Israel in less than seven minutes, leaving minimal time for detection and interception. Furthermore, Iran has successfully developed a new cruise missile named Pave. It's claimed that this missile has a range of approximately 1,025 miles, making Israeli or American targets within its striking distance. Iran also possesses the Meshkat missile, reportedly having a range exceeding that of the Pave cruise missile, approximately 1,242 miles, making Israeli targets easily reachable. Given Iran's missile capabilities, it stands as a profound threat to Israel's security. However, it's essential to recognize that Israel boasts a multi-tiered air defense system prepared to counter the threats posed by Iran. First on the list is Israel's David Sling, designed to intercept enemy aircraft, drones, tactical ballistic missiles, medium to long-range rockets, and cruise missiles fired from distances of 25 to 186 miles. David Sling was first employed in a combat scenario in 2018. As a result, two ballistic missiles failed to cross the border, landing just 0.62 miles inside Syrian territory. In May 2023, David Sling successfully shot down a rocket launched from the Gaza Strip targeting Tel Aviv. Another missile defense system in Israel's arsenal is the Arrow 3. This anti-ballistic missile can intercept and simultaneously destroy over five ballistic missiles within a brief span of 30 seconds. Furthermore, the Arrow 3 can be launched from a single location without waiting for the exact positioning of the targeted ballistic missile. Israel even asserts that the Arrow 3's success rate in fulfilling its duties stands at an impressive 99%. To counter hypersonic missiles, Israel relies on its air defense system named Sky Sonic, introduced in June 2023. Rafael, Israel's defense technology firm and the system's developer, claims that Skysonic can accurately identify and track threats throughout the entire flight path of hypersonic missiles up to an altitude of 229,659 feet. Regarding drone interception, as previously mentioned, drones flying from Iran would first have to navigate the American defense systems. But if they managed to get through, they would then face Israel's drone dome. 
The Drone Dome is a modular anti-drone system capable of identifying even the smallest of targets. It issues warnings and operates without interfering with non-target air assets by emitting signal disruptors, severing the drone's connection with its controller. This dome serves as an effective defense tool in heavily trafficked airspace, be it civilian or military, up to a distance of 2.17 miles and functions effectively under all weather conditions. Warrior developed by Iran. It is estimated that its weight will reach 7,500 tons. This ship will be equipped with various missiles, torpedoes, and modern naval cannons. Since then, the stature of Iran's air defense has only grown, now boasting a remarkable 15,000 personnel and an array of defense equipment segmented into various categories. These encompass radar systems, artillery air defense systems, portable air defense systems, and air defense missile systems. Let's delve into the first asset, the radar systems. Currently, Iran employs various radar types, each showcasing impressive capabilities. The Kushev system stands out with a detection range of up to 93 miles and a maximum altitude of 8.7 miles. Remarkably, this radar can identify up to 100 primary targets, primarily comprising low-flying small aircraft. Next, there's the Alim radar system, which also detects low-flying small aircraft and projectiles. Its detection distance stretches to about 186 miles. The Falak system is designed to spot cruise missiles, stealth jets, stealth drones, and even ballistic missiles. It boasts a detection reach of approximately 248 miles. The ASR radar system comes next with a detection capability of 126 miles. Its compact design ensures versatility, making it suitable for various platforms, both on land and sea. Notably, it can scan for both ships and low-flying aircraft. The Gambar radar is another marvel, covering a distance of about 279 miles. This radar impressively identifies over 100 objects simultaneously, including drones and fighter jets. Mathla ul Fajri focuses on detecting cruise missiles and stealth jets, covering a distance of roughly 298 miles. Lastly, the Gadir radar system is truly a marvel, boasting an astounding range of 683 miles and an altitude reach of 186 miles. This system can identify stealth jets, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and even low-orbit satellites. Among all the radar systems in use, the SeaPair radar system truly stands out as a wildcard. This over-the-horizon type of radar boasts a staggering range of 1,864 miles. It is rumored to be one of the most advanced systems, rivaling even Israel's top-notch radars. As Admiral Amir Gastari, the head of Iran's military electronics industry mentioned, Iran's radar can already detect the unique radar signature left behind by aircraft as advanced as the United States F-35 Lightning II akin to humans having unique fingerprints. The system referred to by Admiral Amir Gastari could be a major game changer in aerial combat against advanced fighter jets. Turning our attention now to the portable air defense systems, Iran operates four types sourced from their own domestic production as well as from China and Sweden. From their homegrown arsenal, Iran boasts the MISAG-1 and MISAG-2. Both these portable air defense systems share similar specifications. Their primary range reaches 3.1 miles with a maximum altitude of 2.5 miles. The only distinct difference lies in their shooting speed. The MISAG-1 clocks in at a speed of 2,297 feet per second, while the MISAG-2 is slightly faster at 2,788 feet per second. From the Chinese lineup, Iran employs the HN-5. This weapon has a range of roughly 2.7 miles, a maximum altitude of 1.5 miles, and a speed of about 1,640 feet per second. The most advanced system comes from Sweden, the RBS-70. This weapon can target objects as far as 5.6 miles away, reaching a maximum altitude of 3.1 miles and flying at a staggering Mach 2 or 1,533 miles per hour. What makes this system even more intriguing is its use of a laser guidance system, enhancing the accuracy of its shots. 
Moving on to the artillery air defense systems, Iran sources its equipment from three main countries, the former Soviet Union, Switzerland, and its own domestic production. From the former Soviet Union, Iran operates at least four types of artillery air defense systems. These include the ZU-23-2 Kansas, 19 ZSU-47-2, and the ZSU-23-4. Out of these, the ZSU-23-4 stands out as the most modern. Its mobile capability, thanks to being mounted on a military vehicle platform, allows for greater flexibility on the battlefield. This system has an operational range of 279 miles and can move at speeds of 31 miles per hour. When defending against threats, this vehicle employs a weapon system that can unleash a rapid firing speed of 4,000 rounds per minute. When it comes to Swiss-made artillery air defense systems, Iran deploys the Erlikon GDF. This impressive piece of machinery boasts a firing speed of 550 rounds per minute and can reach targets at an altitude of up to 2.5 miles. On the domestic front, the Swiss artillery air defense system features the Mezba-1. This Iranian-made system is equally astonishing, with a firing rate of a whopping 4,000 rounds per minute and a range extending up to 2.5 miles. Now, let's delve into the primary missile-based air defense systems that Iran employs. Here, there are over 20 different types of air defense systems Iran uses to safeguard its territories against external threats, notably from the United States. Iran is notoriously fascinated by missiles, viewing them as pivotal in modern warfare. If one had to single out the cream of the crop from this vast arsenal, the Bavar 373 system would be a top contender. This system has been serving Iran since 2019, having been in the developmental phase for nearly a decade since 2010. Presently, the Bevar 373 can launch two types of interception missiles, the Sayad 4 and the Sayad 4B. The differences between these two are quite stark. The Sayad 4 can target up to 143 miles away, reaching maximum speeds of Mach 6.8 or 5,672 miles per hour. In contrast, the Sayad 4B possesses the capability to strike targets 186 miles away hurtling at Mach 8 or an incredible 6,709 miles per hour. According to Brigadier General Mahdi Farahi, who was involved in the development of the Bavar 373 and its ongoing modernization, this system outperforms Russia's renowned S-400. Not only can it counter regular missiles and rockets, but it's also adept at neutralizing fifth-generation fighter jets and ballistic missiles. Unsatisfied with just the Bavar 373, Iran is currently in the process of developing a new tactical air defense system called Sayad. From the claims being made, this new air defense system can simultaneously intercept up to 12 targets. Such a claim is undoubtedly grandiose and, if true, then hats off to Iran for achieving such significant military advancements despite being under stringent economic sanctions from the United States and the Western world. Remarkably, Iran ranks second in the list of the most sanctioned countries globally. Observing Iran's progression, one might speculate that the sanctions imposed by the U.S. and the West might soon be perceived as trivial.